Happy New Year's Airbnb Nation. This is Danny, the Airbnb Pro, speaking to you from Manila, Philippines on January 1st, 2019. You are watching this video if either you purchased Elevate Host or you're interested in using Price Labs. I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step process from signing up to your uh, for Price Labs through all the customizations. Now, if you bought Elevate Host, you I did a lot of this for you, and so I'll tell you when you can start paying attention. It'll be on when we after we sign up and confirm the account and the white screen appears. The first thing you'll do is you'll go to pricelabs.com, you'll press start your free trial. Full name, email address, uh, can be any email address, it doesn't have to be your Airbnb email address, password, confirm your password, and in the referral code you want to put optimize, all caps, in order to get a 30 day free trial plus $10 off your first payment. After we do that, you will log into the system and it'll look something like this. Okay, and we can see here, we have 29 days of free trial remaining. The next thing you're gonna wanna do, though once you first create it, you'll see why in a second I prepared for this video and signed up yesterday. But when you first log in, you won't have any of this information. The next step you'll do is click Connect your Airbnb PMS account. They have directions here. I'll verbalize what they're saying. Step one, enter your Airbnb email address. Enter your Airbnb password. Now, assuming you're using Airbnb, though they have a lot of integrations. Then click login. This screen will disappear. Okay? And you're going to receive an email or text message from Airbnb with a four-digit code. Once you receive that code, you're going to click the blue button again. This will pop up with your email and password already filled in. And then you're going to enter the four digit code here and press login. The note says that if you have any special pricing rules directly on Airbnb, 20% plus for a specific holiday, those rules will be carried over to Price Labs. And once you press login, something like this will come up. Except these numbers won't be filled in. It'll look exactly like this this middle one here. Now for better demonstration purposes, I've opened up a new account. After about a day, these numbers will fill in. So when you first sign up, it'll all be blank like this. These will also be blank after about 24 hours. These numbers will fill in. These numbers are very important. They represent your uh, occupancy in the open days that you have. So these numbers represent your unbooked days or your available days in the next 7, 30, and 60 days. So uh, let's take Auburn, Bed Bath, Sweden, South End Penthouse. So this, these numbers mean that 57% of the days are available within seven days, 80% are available within 30 days, and 90% are available within 60 days. And the color code helps you out a bit. Red is bad, green is good, yellow is medium. The next thing you will want to do, and so if you purchased Elevate, I've done all this for you, including set up some customizations that I think are relevant to your account. And this is where we'll chat. But if we press review prices, Price Labs is going to give you a recommended base price. Simply what you should do, again, the base price doesn't really matter. You're going to change it. We'll get into the process of how you manage this going forward at the end. The base price Price Labs suggests is 116. So what I want you to do is simply look at your calendar if these prices are about right, then enter 116 in here, okay? And then enter your lowest price. Now again, your lowest price is not what you would like to get. It is the absolute bare minimum that you're willing to accept instead of having the place stay vacant. So if we say it's 60 here, you could just leave highest blank unless you really don't want your guests paying above a certain amount. And then what you're gonna press is save and refresh. The prices won't change except this 58 will go, these 58s and 59s will go to 60. So we'll press save and, save and re refresh. Okay, here it is, saved and refreshed. Save and refresh button updates within Price Labs. Once you wanna push those updates to Airbnb, you'll press sync now. If you don't need to press sync now, if you don't press sync now, they will be updated at the end of the day when Price Labs updates your accounts anyways. They do it once a day. 
The customizations feature of Price Labs is the best of any smart pricing tool. We're going to go through them now. Last minute prices is something I use on virtually all my accounts. If you want to activate any of these, you have to press the off button, which brings it on. Now you have fixed, fixed, uh, percent flat or percent gradual. I am going to recommend you do percent gradual. So now if I fill this out, for example, I might say 30% discount within 15 days. All right. Now if I press save customizations, we'll see that the price is updated, but I will show it to you on the calendar how it is identified. So we can see here, demand forecast is normal, neighborhood occupancy is 44%, custom last minute discount, which is what I just added, 18%. Now if we go to the eighth, it's gonna be somewhere like 19, 20%. Uh, sorry, the opposite. It's gonna raise up as we get closer into the days. So that'll be 16%. The ninth is gonna be like 14, 15%. Okay, and then all the way to today, we should see 30% discount. Custom last minute discount, 30%. The reason why we do this is because I noticed that Price Labs doesn't discount quite enough. And it's optional, you don't have to do it. The next customization is Orphan Day Prices. This basically means, again, if you want to turn it on, you press on. This means if you have a minimum of two days, an Orphan Day price is, uh, an Orphan Day is one. If you have a minimum required stay of three days, an Orphan Day is one or two days. So you can say fixed or percentage. Fixed is, let's say you want it to be 200 always, orphan day gaps of no less than what, two or three days. More likely you're gonna do percent. So if you wanna do a 50% premium for gaps less than two, less than or equal to two days. You can do a premium or a discount. There's, there's reasonable options for both. Uh, one being if you're in a big city, you might want to raise a premium on an orphan day night because uh, part of, to restrict partiers, for example. Minimum stay update is great, so we'll turn it on and then a few other options you notice pop up here. Fixed is simply weekday, one day minimum, weekend, two day minimum. Booking value is based on the booking value of the day. So if your average price is about $50, you can say booking value of 150, and that'll essentially create a three-day minimum. Now, because prices fluctuate up and down pretty significantly, you might put a booking value on something, and that minimum will turn out to be one, two, three, four, five days. The, the minimum days will shift based on the booking value. You can update your minimum stay for last minute bookings. Let's say your, your regular minimum night stay is five, but you wanna say two days minimum within the last 10 days. So if I have any unbooked days within 10 days, the minimum is now two days. Minimum stay for far out bookings. You can change your minimum, usually increase it. Minimum stay seven days. If the, if the guest is booking greater than 90 days in the future. The reason you do this, or you might wanna do this, is because if someone's booking so far in advance, they probably know something that you don't, or they're price conscious, and they're thinking if they book really far in advance, they'll get a good deal. Neither of which are good for you, the host, if you're trying to maximize your revenue. At the same time, if you have your prices correct, then you might not want to forego a normal booking two, three, four nights, 90 days in the future. And this is my preference. I don't use this feature. Minimum stay for orphan bookings. So again, an orphan night, remember if, you're, if you have a two night minimum, an orphan night would be one night. If, if, if you have two days booked and two days booked and there's one open, that's an orphan night. Or if your minimum is three nights, three nights and three nights, and you have two nights open, that is now an orphan night, which couldn't otherwise be booked on Airbnb. If we turn that on, we can say, you can either set the 
day, you, you could say the minimum say is one, two, three nights, or likely you just say length of gap for days. If you have a three day minimum, you'll say minimum days gaps between one and two days. So that means if you have a one day gap, the minimum stay becomes one day. If you have a two day gap, the minimum stay becomes two days. This is really useful. Day of the week pricing adjustments. This is fantastic. Some people say, some people weekends are highly, highly valuable. So here you can simply say, increase my weekend prices 100%. Increase Friday 100%. And you can do anything, maybe even Saturday to increase a third booking, maybe decrease it 20%. You can decrease or increase midweek days, whatever. Minimum far out pricing means that you're gonna set a fixed rate for daily rates after a certain day. So you can say on this calendar, it was right around 116. So we might say 145 USD outside of 90 days. Price Labs raises the, the, incre the price anyways as you get out, but these tools are great. Price Labs is fantastic, but it's not 100%. You need to, you'll need to tweak it here and there. Don't tweak it, don't get into adjusting individual days. Every now and then you might wanna do that if there's a huge conference, like for example, San Francisco for Salesforce, you're getting three times the amount. This tool and none of these tools really pick that up good. So you're gonna to wanna to adjust that specifically. But I see a lot of hosts, they, they're kinda of nitpicky. They're like, I could get an extra 10 bucks here, I could get an extra 15 bucks here, and it just defeats the purpose of this tool. Um, what they're not seeing is the prices that they're getting. So if the option one is you price it yourself, option two is let Price Labs do it. If you're pricing it yourself, don't assume that you're doing it correct. You're probably not. Just as Price Labs isn't doing it correct either, but they're making it a whole lot easier and adding customizations in to get it as close to perfect, much more than you could do on your own. And it has the added benefit of saving you a bunch of time. Minimum weekend pricing. So again, pretty self-explanatory. You can say on the weekends, no less than 120 bucks, whatever. After you're done, you're press save customizations. We got an error minimum stay it needs to be uh, greater than zero. So we'll come up here, the booking value. Uh, okay, so we'll say 250, for example. That should get rid of it. And here we go. All of your customizations are gonna be on the left here. Now you would never do this many customizations, you really won't. On my accounts, I use one, two, or three customizations. I pretty much always use this last minute price. Orphan day prices is, uh, is very useful as well. So we can you can always scroll over and see what your customization, how they have affected. So you see minimum stay is four here because minimum booking value is 250. Your current price is 76, they're gonna change it to 72 with the next round of updates. So we'll press save and refresh, which means that the numbers should populate in the chart above. Maybe we'll just refresh the page and here we go. Minimum 60, base 116, tags, a customization group, I'll go over in a different video. You're not gonna need these unless you're a property manager with, with many properties in different locations. Last sync 20 hours ago, so green means you have synced it. So for those Elevate hosts, I do not, you will see it red. I do not turn it on for you. I'll add some customizations, and I want you to watch this video, and you can ask me any questions on our call, but it is up to you ultimately to press sync prices. So this particular host has 15 days left of a remaining trial. The last thing I wanna go over is how you're gonna manage this going forward. Typically, you're gonna to wanna to look at the 30-day occupancy range. Okay, so if we take this first one here, you'll click review prices, and you'll see that the 30-day occupancy is 50%. 50% is booked, 50% is available. Anywhere between about 40 and 60%, you basically don't have to change the base price. The base price is what you're going to change when you review your listing once per week. For each listing, it takes about 25 seconds. Now in this particular listing, I wouldn't change the base price. Assuming it's at 131 as suggested by Price Labs, I wouldn't change it. I would keep it the same. If we go up to this one here where the 30-day 
available uh, occupancy is 80%, that's quite high, I'm going to change it. So because, it's, because the occupancy is above 60, more than 60% of available days are open in the next 30 days, I'm going to lower the price. So it's an inverse relationship. This 30 day occupancy is above 60, so I'm going to lower base price. And what I'll usually do is I'll lower base price in increments of five or 10. If you're around $100, you can do five. If you wanna be really aggressive, do 10 or 15. If you're above 200, 10 to 15 is a normal. If you wanna be aggressive, go 20 or even 25. So in this case, it also depends on how high you are. So 80% is pretty high. That's an unhealthy listing in terms of occupancy. So what I would do here is I would probably do, I would probably do $10 here, lower at 10 bucks. And I would save and then I would sink. And I would do that because pricing is probably the, the single greatest thing you can do on Airbnb to affect your, your search rank. Airbnb, as you can imagine, loves, and you're gonna laugh if you've ever used Airbnb's own smart pricing tool, they love low prices and they love discounts. So as soon as you tell the system, hey, I just lowered all my prices about 10%, you're automatically gonna get boosted up immediately. And this is a short-term solution. Every now and then, if I, have a, if I have a slow month coming up, I'll lower the base price. Like I said, I check it every Wednesday. Sometimes I lower the base price four weeks in a row. And that's okay. Because later on, I know with an optimized listing and good reviews coming in, I'll be able to raise the price. But it's going to fluctuate. Throughout the year, it's going to go up and down 50%. Now to take a last example here, one that's low, 26%. So this means only 26% of the available days are available for booking in the next 30 days. That is high. That occupancy is very high. Remember, we want it to be around 40 to 60%. So in this case, if our base price was 233 as suggested, remember it's over 200, I would raise this up. I would raise this up to maybe 245. I would press save and then I would press sync to push it to Airbnb. That is your tutorial for price lapse. It's a fantastic and powerful tool. It's my official recommendation. I've been using them exclusively for the past two and a half years. I wrote up a blog post reviewing them and I do continually monitor and test other services. There are a lot of pricing services out there. The most popular is Beyond Pricing. Another one is Wheelhouse. These are tools you can give a shot. They have different levels of functionality. For example, Beyond Pricing, they have limited functionality, limited customization. So this is good if you're uh, if you don't want to, if you watch this video and you said, I know I'm not going to understand any of this stuff, then you're not going to properly take advantage of Price Labs. So you might want to go to Beyond Pricing where they just gave you a few customizations. Price Labs charges you a fixed rate per month, depending on the number of listings you have. The more listings you have, the incremental rate goes down. So if it starts at 20, if you have 10 listings, the incremental rate might go down to $15 a month. What that means, it, while Beyond Pricing charges 1%, most tools charge a percent. Uh, this means that it depends on your nightly rate. If you have a low nightly rate, like if uh, you're at 25 or $50 a night, below $100 a night, 1% is actually gonna work out better. We'll do, a, we'll do a little math here, see if I'm correct. So if you have $100 a night listing and you're booked out all 30 days, that's $3,000. That means you're going to pay one, uh, you're going to be 1% of $3,000 or $30. That's at $100 only. Or let's see, pricing. Select your region, USA, Canada, European countries. Okay, so it starts at $20. So even if your average price is around $100 and you're booked out most of the nights, you're still going to come out ahead on Price Lab. So that means if your pricing is $150 or more, you're basically always going to come out ahead on terms of pricing in terms of the price that the tool is charging you or via Price Labs. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's going to be uh, posted on YouTube. If you like it, give me a thumbs up down below. If you didn't like it, uh, maybe not give me a thumbs down. Instead, write me a comment. Let me know how I can improve. What features do you want me to go over in the future? Happy Elevated Hosting, everyone.